Today on the podcast, we are doing our stock trade and investment with my man O. So uh, get ready. It's going to be another great, awesome podcast on uh, money, wealth, and uh, all that good stuff. Brand Money Podcast starts right about now. It's uh. Welcome to the Fair Money Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. This is your boy, Sadao Nibai Jr., a.k.a. CK. And along with my man, Omar Williams, we call him O. And Denise Obi, we call her D-Nice. You also, it was up to the peeps. What's up, good peeps? So listen, sometimes you have technical difficulties, and uh, you know what? We had one today, and then that's okay. That's fine. Because uh, everything can't be perfect, but everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. <laughs> so, listen, I know we started a little different today, but sometimes you got to laugh. You know what I mean? You just, you just got to laugh and, and, and let things ride and go. So, but anyway, it is Affirmation Wednesday. Before we get started and jump right in, we're going to affirmations in and out the way. Get our day started on this great and lovely Wednesday morning. Those of you who are getting the replay of this via video or audio, it is Affirmation, whatever day that is, morning, noon, night, or middle of the night. But every time you're listening, and uh, let's do this and get this day going. Are you ready? Here we go. Today will be a good day. Today will be a great day. Today will be an awesome day. Today will be an amazing day. Today will be a phenomenal day. Today will be stress-free. Today will be a stress-less day. Today, I will overcome all barriers that want to block my progress. Today, all circumstances, issues, and situations will line up and work in my favor. Today, all things will line up for my good. Today, I'll become better than who I was yesterday. I am a go-getter. I am victorious. I am triumphant. I am an overcomer. I never lose. I either win or I learn. I take authority over this day. I will dominate this day. I will conquer this day. And everything I have spoken into this day will happen as I have affirmed because I am more than a conqueror. Let's get it started. So today is Stock Trade and Investment Day. My man O, as always and usual, is going to bring you guys uh, and drop some knowledge on you guys as far as the stock market, trading, things of that nature, investing. So get your pen and paper, pad, notebook, iPad, whatever you use, take notes, get it out. It is about to go down today with my man O on this podcast. And if you guys are ready, O, the floor is yours, my brother. All right. Well, thank you again, man, for another stock and trade one, man. We're we going to get together, get your pen and your papers out, and we're going to talk about generational wealth tonight. Um, if you saw last week's uh, program, we talk about the royal families and how they keep wealth in the family over hundreds of years. I'm going to give you a little bit of a blueprint on um, the blueprint for creating generational wealth um and before i get started too if if anybody's out there like following some of these stock and trade program or the the shows and you're trying to implement this stuff you're going to lose money investments aren't guaranteed um things happen there's risk involved that's why you have to like measure your risk risk what you can lose and 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 invest what you can afford to lose so I don't want to come off like every move I'm making is a as a 1000% winner. No. Risk is involved, but over time, over years, investing does start to compound. You win some, you lose some, but it goes up and down, up and down, okay? Um we're going to talk about building a legacy. Uh Proverbs 13 and 22 says, 
A, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Okay. We'll talk about understanding generational wealth, real estate, a, a diversified portfolio, passing down financial knowledge, which is key because sometimes we we don't want to go to the grave with all this knowledge and nobody knows. Once you die, then it's over. Okay. Creating a trust and continuing the legacy. And then I'm going to have a few extra nuggets towards the end. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. Understanding generational wealth. Generational wealth is the accumulation of assets, resources that are passed down from one generation to another. Okay. It's a long-term approach to building wealth. Like I said, wealth doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. These royal families that we learned about last week, it's one pile on over the next pile on over the next pile on. And it's compounding year after year, generation after generation. And it's just, it just becomes to where you need, like you have trust fund babies. Well, we're getting into that. Okay. It's a long-term approach to building wealth that focuses on creating financial security for future generations. As I just said, the scripture says a good man leaves an inheritance for his what? Children's children. Okay. To create generational wealth is important to understand the value of long-term investing and the power of compounding interest. Okay. By investing in assets, what is an asset? Make it simple. Something that puts money in your pocket every month after you invest in it. A liability is when you when you buy something or invest in something, it's taking money out of your pocket you to have it. Okay. That's a liability. An asset is putting money in your pocket after you buy it or invest in it. Okay. So buying, investing in assets that appreciate over time, such as real estate stocks, you can build wealth that will continue to grow and benefit your family for years to come. Let's get it. So the first thing was, was what I just talked about. We're investing in real estate. Um, real estate is a popular way to build generational wealth. Because it's the potential to appreciate in value over time. Now, right, you know, at certain times in, in history where the housing market crashes, like, for example, 2008, market crashed, houses went from 200,000 down to 90,000, 180,000. Some people may say, when real estate crashes, well, if you look at the same prices of those houses that crashed, at this particular time right now, they're probably doubled in price from that time. So real estate does appreciate in value over years and you can pass it to the next generation. Okay. Um, by purchasing the property and holding on to it for several years, you can build equity and create a valuable asset that can be passed down from generations. Okay. When investing in real estate is important to consider factors such as location, market trends, the potential for rental income, okay, by doing your research and making informed decisions. You can maximize and return and create a strong foundation for your family's financial future. Just a quick tidbit on um, if, you, if you're going into rental properties, uh, the, the, the way that I, I, just a little nugget, would you live there? <laughs> would you live there and <laughs> would you rent there? If those two things are answered, yes, probably a good re rental property to consider. Also, if you've been into, like, if you've rented, if you were a renter before, that part of, like, that part of investing should be easy for you because you know what you were looking for, what neighborhood you liked, uh, the different things that you would like about it. So that's an easy way to get involved into passing down um, generational wealth. Next slide. This one's big because um, a lot of times when people pass away, they don't have a will. They don't they don't have anything to say. I want this to go here, this to go to that person, this to go to this person. And then the family fights. And then what happens is if, if nothing's in a will, it goes to probate. And in probate, anybody can get your your uh, goods. So like you, your, your grandfather or your great grandfather worked all this time had all these homes and all this property and all these assets and he nobody had a will and no and it and it wasn't written down anywhere to, to pass it to anybody. It goes to the government and the government divvies it out to people that are investors. Okay? So, this is what you can do to avoid that. Okay? Creating a trust. 
A trust is a legal arrangement that allows you to transfer assets to future generations while minimizing taxes and protecting your wealth. Two key things there, minimizing taxes and protecting your wealth, okay? By creating a trust, you can ensure that your assets are distributed according to your wishes and that your family members are provided for after you are gone. So what, what, let me finish, let me finish reading. When creating a trust, it's important to work with an experienced attorney who can help you navigate the complex legal requirements and develop a plan that meets your unique needs. By taking this step, you can create a lasting legacy that provides for your family for generations to come. Okay. So like this trust, you can create this trust to, to, to say anything. So you can say, you can create a trust to say, okay, I'm only leaving a thousand dollars a month to each member of my family who completes a college education. Okay. And you can like detail it that much to where you like anybody just doesn't, doesn't partake in it. You can say, I want to try I'm creating a family trust to say, okay, this rental portfolio divvy it out amongst whatever. And the only people that can touch it are people who get life insurance policies and put it inside the trust. So when they die, the, the trust keeps building up and build it again. I'm getting a little deeper into it, but like, this is a good way to keep, to keep in the family. Um, I, I don't know if you ever heard it, but people are called trust fund babies. All these rich kids, you know, like the Paris Hilton's and all these, the Jenner's, and um, the Kardashians and all them kids, or, or any kid like that, like that you know, come from rich money, from from stock, they're probably a trust fund baby. So they couldn't mess up the money if they tried, because it's already in the trust that these people get this amount every month for the rest of the, you know, until they pass on. But it's probably requirements to to being able to get that money. Okay, so look into that. Like you know, like set that up. And if you don't get a trust, you can at least start with a will. Get a will. So you never know what get, what can happen. So that'll protect you. Okay. <clears throat> Next, just build just flat out building a diversified investment portfolio. Okay. What okay, well, let's get into that. D- diversification is key when it comes to creating gen- generational wealth. By spreading your investments across different asset classes, such as stocks, bonds, real estate, you can minimize risk and maximize returns, okay? When building a diversified investment portfolio, it's important to work with a financial advisor who can help you develop a strategy that aligns with your goals and risk tolerance, okay? By taking a thoughtful long-term approach to investing, you can create a stable financial foundation for your family's future. So, for example, me in particular, or my family, I know I talk about stocks, but like real estate is our main thing, right? But you have to be diversified. So you, we want to be a part of a lot of things. But real estate is the main bread and butter of how I want to build my family's legacy. Okay. Stocks is just, that's just a, you know, that's just an income producing that thing that like over time. But uh, to my children so they could pass it down. But the real estate piece is the one that I want to build into the legacy into the trust and pass that down. So my main thing is real estate. And I don't even really talk about it in here, but maybe I should. Okay. Let's get to the next, next slide. Okay. So this is another thing, passing down financial knowledge. One of the biggest things is we, we lack knowledge. We don't know half the times it's, it's simple things like just knowing interest, knowing how a compounding interest is knowing what, um, um, amortized interest or loan, amortized loan versus a simple interest loan. Like just knowing simple thing, knowing what a trust is, knowing what a will is, you know, knowing, knowing what to do, um, what, what a diversified portfolio or stock portfolio looks like 60% stocks, 40% bonds, like just getting your, your financial knowledge up so you can pass it down. Just credit alone, just knowing your credit score, how it's created, the three different uh, companies that that track your credit. Just just get your financial knowledge up so you can pass that down. And I know some people say that's not my strong suit, but 
I think you have to know it. So you you don't have kids or your generation out here just making the same mistakes that prior generations made. The buck has to stop with you. Um, so, OK, one of the most important aspects of creating generational wealth is passing down financial knowledge to future generations by teaching your children and grandchildren about investing, budgeting and saving. You can empower them to make smart financial decisions and build wealth for themselves and their family. So they shouldn't have to make the same mistakes we've made. OK, we've made the mistakes. They don't have to go back out and get in bad debt, getting bad credit have low credit scores and like just rent, rinse, wash and repeat the bad habits over time because there was no financial literacy amongst the family. But we're here to change that. That's why we do the stock and trade um, podcast. OK, in addition to teaching financial literacy, it's important to lead by example. <laughs> yeah, you can't tell them to save money while, you know, you're just doing anything you want to do, okay? By demonstrating responsible financial behavior and modeling good habits, you can you can inspire your loved ones to follow in your footsteps and create a legacy of financial stability and success, okay? Next slide. Before we go to commercial. Continuing the legacy. And that's what it's all about. Creating generational wealth is not just about accumulating assets. It's also about instilling the value. So, it's beyond wealth, right? Like, so like, I'm a believer. I'm going to pass that down. That's a part of my family's wealth, part of my family's legacy. Just knowing that we serve God, you know what I'm saying? We, we serve Jesus Christ. That's part of my family's legacy. Not just money, but money is big. You know, it, we need the wealth. We need the health. We need all of that good stuff. It's also about instilling values and principles that will guide your family for years to come, okay? By emphasizing the importance of hard work, responsibility, and generosity, you can create a legacy that extends far beyond financial success. As you pass down your wealth and knowledge to future generations, it's important to encourage them to continue the tradition of building and preserving the wealth. I also recommend, be, before I continue, I recommend personally, I wouldn't say give, like just give, <laughs> make a make a qualification of why ch ch your child should get a certain amount right because if they don't work for it they'll probably blow it if they don't feel like they've earned it they'll probably put it all out the window like they'll probably blow it they'll probably spend all your money and before you know it in one generation y'all are broke again <laughs> okay by working together as a family and staying committed to your shared goals you can create a lasting legacy that benefits your family for generations to come. All right, so we're going to take a quick break here, and then we'll come back, my man O, uh, to uh, do a few more things here on the podcast. So stay tight, stay close, and I'm going to ask just a few questions probably at the end or make some, some statements just to, you know, maybe clarify some things for some of you who may be saying, I'm not really sure if I understand what he's talking about. <laughs> so we're going to do that for you. All right, bring on my name, podcast. Be right back. Are you looking for an apparel company that's positive, uplifting, and truly cares about you? Then look no further. Frame of Mind, Inc., an apparel brand company, impresses on individuals to think positive thoughts, say positive things, and do positive deeds. Get positive apparel, such as t-shirts, hoodies, and wristbands for children, teens, and adults in various colors and sizes. Customized services include logo and t-shirt design, screen printing for individuals, families, schools, profit, and nonprofit organizations. You can reach Frame of Mind, Inc. at 302-689-3499 or visit their website at www.frameofmindinc.com. Frame of Mind, Inc. Think it. Speak it. Achieve it. All right, all right. We are back with the uh, second half, we'll call it the uh, Stock Trade and Investment Podcast. So I'm going to let O continue with his last uh, few points here, and then we'll kind of interject and have some uh, some uh, Q&A, if you want to call it, uh, to get some uh, some more understanding of what all he's talking about today. O, floor is yours. Right, so here we go. We're just going to get – we don't even got to get to the slides. I'm just I'm going to just run, run off these last few things that'll help with generational wealth. Uh, one, a quick one to do is just to start a family business. 
um, a lot of you, I know we talked about Royals last week, but a lot of the richest families in the world, you know them, but you may not know them. Like, for example, um, the, the Waltons, okay? They do Walmart. You got Mars. They do, uh, they, they do the Mars, like M&Ms. You know of M&Ms. But they also are bigger than, like, if you've ever bought a soda, you put like cash in the machine. They create, they make those machines. They're called coin acceptors. Okay, you you got other families like um, what's another family? I had this up last week, but the, a lot of your families are family businesses that are like big, big pat. They pass down wealth. Everybody's employed. I think the Waltons may have the like the top out of the top ten, probably four or five of their family members are like the top within the top 10 of the richest people in America. Imagine your family having the majority of your family in the top 10 richest people of uh, to date. Okay. That, that's that. Again, this investing in stocks and bonds. We talk about that almost every time I talk, that's a good way to just build up um, family wealth, just buying stocks, accumulating stocks. And then once you accumulate a lot of stocks, you can actually do like creative things with that, that you can kind of put your family on to, um, you can borrow against it. You can you can you can rent your shares to the market. It's a bunch of different things. So that's another one. Um, and then passing down family heirlooms. Um, something that I I'm just now starting to understand. I got to learn more about it. But it's like family heirlooms such as jewelry, artwork, and antiques can be a valuable way to pass wealth down from generation to generation. Okay, these items often have sentimental value as well as a financial value. By passing down family heirlooms, families can preserve the history, the traditions, while also providing the sense of valuable assets. So, like, these heirlooms accomplish a lot of different things. Keeps traditions passed, shares the history of the family, as well as, you know, a valuable asset. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, continuing education and training. Keep learning. Keep telling, keep passing it down. Keep learning, keep telling, keep passing it down. Get your get your generation to know enough to where they tell their generation and generations, and then we fulfill that scripture. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that's what we're trying to do. That sounds good to me, yes, brother. Sir. Sounds good to me. Learn, tell. Pass. <laughs> there you go. Learn, tell, pass. You should write that down. Learn, tell, pass. Or for better, word, learn it, tell, talk about it, pass it down. Very simple. So we're gonna get to it. Just a couple of uh, of questions or statements here, if it's for Oda to answer for us here. So uh, I'm gonna go back to, and I'm just gonna kind of go through everything you talked about, just in real briefly. So uh, you mentioned earlier. And very probably one of your first statements you said was when you are into the stock market, you are going to lose money, mm -hmm. right? And and when we say that, we're not. I want to and Oak can clarify too. We're not saying that you're going to lose your money in the market. Now you can, but here's the thing: you're not going to always be gaining or getting money. You're also going to lose money. But that's where a strategy comes in to help you understand. The, the the process of quote losing money and gaining money. This is why we say in our affirmations, I never lose, I always win. And there's a reason for that. You can use that in any part of your life, including the stock market. Because you are going to lose money. But the question is, how much are you willing to lose before you begin to gain again? And so that's where my man Oka help you guys that he's helped me out with that as well. Um and so again, you know, you're going to lose money, but you also you have a strategy that'll help you to also gain more than you lose on the other on the other end. Any, any elaboration you want to put on that, Omar? No, yeah, man. It's just what happens is people, you know, they get involved with it and they think they're going to turn $1,000 into a lifelong amount of money. And, and, and that can happen, but that's probably lucky, right? You could turn $1,000 compounded over time, accumulating the money, putting $100 in, $200, like just putting in consistently over time. Yes, you could change your family's life. But to say I got this thousand dollars, what can you do for me? Yeah, you know, that that's that's you can do it, 
but that's more that's that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about building wealth, right? So, in in building wealth, you're going to have some hits. You're going to have some years where it's not as much. You're going to have some years where it goes down. But over time, piling on and accumulating, it will it will grow. Your your nest egg will grow. Money has to. Move. Yeah. Yep. Got you. Moving on, talked about trust funds. And um, you said that one of the things that I think you said it was key was to put requirements yeah. on the you want to you know, make the trust available to. I think that, that was very key because, you know, uh, it's just a matter of, you know, you, you want to leave, you know, something for your family once you're gone. And you want to start something now. And then when you are gone, you want to leave something for them. But again, you don't want to just give stuff away and people would, because then, as you said before, at the end, you said you can also, after one generation, now it's mm -hmm. all gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that was one key thing you said as far as trust funds. Um, and again, you know, if you guys want to get more information on what a trust fund is and all these other different you know, areas of, of, of building wealth or, or having accounts, again, my man O is another guy you want to get in contact with to help you continue to do that uh, through, the, through the course of your life and to start building that for your family's lives. Um, another thing, diversifying your portfolio. I mean, I've heard that a million times over. Diversify, diversify, diversify. So, and I'm going to say something here and oh, feel free to kind of, you know, elaborate. You know, diversify, you know, of course, means to, you know, put your money in different areas and places to be able to accumulate that wealth. But also, you don't want to stretch yourself so thin that you're not able to kind of keep up with how you're diversifying your, your money because now you've got 20 things going on, but you only keep can keep up with 10. Well, if you can only keep up with 10, then just, then just do 10. Like, don't do 20 just because you want to, quote unquote, get rich quick. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You know, the keep, keep things, you know, in, in, in the box you're able to contain and and have a good stewardship over any elaboration you want to talk about on that oh yeah and too like just with a diversified portfolio that's also a level of protection for your generational wealth right so like mm -hmm. if you have your, all your eggs in one basket <laughs> right and you just invest in eggs for lack of a better example then eggs go <laughs> eggs go to zero then all your eggs are zero but if you invest in eggs mm. you invest in cheese you invest in meat you invest in whatever else, well, the eggs went to zero, but the, when the eggs go to zero, the cheese goes up. I hope I'm, I hope y'all yeah. are tracking what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. When, when, when cheese goes to zero, the eggs go back up. So it's like your, your portfolio right. is balancing itself out. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So you want to have a or, diversified enough or, portfolio. Or as, yeah. As, as my man... Uh, um, uh, what's his name? I, I forget his name right now. He said, "Are you picking up what I'm putting Are you down?" Picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? You know. So of course, yeah, good, 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 good. All right, now passing down financial knowledge. Passing down from I think this is probably the biggest one we could talk about, and we won't stay on this one all day. But again, if you don't know, you can't what you can't learn, tell, and pass down. Like you have to learn yourself, you know, and then you can go to others and then pass that down. Now, of course, you want to make sure you get the right information. You don't want to get the wrong information. <laughs> learn that, tell people, and then pass it down. You want to make sure you're getting the right and correct information to do so. So financial knowledge, financial literacy, all that is great for all of us to learn and know about. We'll leave that right there. Um, I, I wrote this down. You talked about, you know, you know uh, continuing a legacy. And I wrote down this, leaving and continuing a legacy, because mm -hmm. you can leave a legacy, but if that legacy gets 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 tarnished, it doesn't continue. It, you left one, but it didn't continue. But if you leave one that is that again is continuing on after you're gone, now now you have something that's that's very sustainable and something that, and again, like, like O said, you know, you want to have requirements, stipulations for how you want to pass that down to those you're giving to, whether it's, you know, money or it's, you know, it's land houses, you know, and he said also the, uh, the um, passing down of the family 
uh, looms, whether it's jewelry or it's artwork or antiques. Like you want to put stipulations on that requirement so that, you know, this stuff can be preserved and it can continue the legacy, you know, not just leave it and then it just falls by the wayside. Um, last thing I just want to interject real quick is that uh, O talked about, you know, again, the requirements, making sure that, you know, you say, hey, whatever you leave for the generations after you, like, hey, this right here is for those who decide to complete a college degree. Right. Or this here they can have if they decide to, you know, whatever you decide to make it do. And I was looking at uh, something that Michael Jordan said when he was on the Oprah show, and I came across it on Instagram today. And he was talking about at the time he was still uh, he was still playing, but he was you know on his way out of the NBA, still playing. And he had said, you know, guys like himself, Magic, Larry Bird, you know, Charles Barkley. He said they all earned what they got when it came to playing basketball in the NBA. And y'all know we we compare mindset and all that to sports on like a regular basis. And so Michael Jordan said and this is before this era of basketball came. This is he said and he, the thing he said he said look he said what happens is the guys now this is back in like the early two thousands <laughs> okay. He said, the guys now, he's like, you start giving them stuff before they even play the game. And now they haven't earned anything, and now they feel entitled. And this is the same thing, because now, like I said, if if you're not going to put requirements on what it is you're passing down here, you just give them stuff, they're not going to necessarily earn anything. It's going to be, oh, well, you know, this this is owed or entitled to me. And so I thought that was just that was one last thing I wanted to say. I thought that was important to say because uh, you want to make sure that, you know, people are to a large degree earning what you are giving, them, especially when it comes to large amounts of money or large, you know, uh, pieces of land, all that stuff. And then not only that, but put stipulations on what they can and cannot do, meaning you cannot sell this. This stays in the family. For the rest of all time, you cannot sell this land, you cannot sell this house, you cannot sell this jewelry, you cannot pawn it, or whatever it is you're trying to do. That stays in the family. And so you have requirements and stipulations you want to put on there. I'm not going to go any further because O has already dropped all the knowledge. I just want to kind of make sure that we understood what all he was saying. And of course, ask some questions too, because, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe it may be a question that there's someone wants to ask. And if we ask it for them, then that question can get can get answered. So, um, anything else you want to leave with us? Oh, before we go, I just leave you with this: the, the first thing, the, the the main key to financial or to generational wealth is financial literacy. Somebody got to learn it. And then pass that down. Even if you don't make the millions, that information should make the next generation millions. Even if you don't get it, that the information alone is enough to start them 10 steps ahead of where you started. That's it. And I co-sign, I co-sign <laughs> on that. Information is free. 100%. <laughs> there you go. Yep. There you go. No, I, yeah, I, I see. No, Denise is on here today. I know she's in, she's in the background. I can pay the background <laughs> day. But uh, Denise, anything you want to say before we before we end out today? You you've been on the background side of the day. I don't think she does. Okay, she wants she wants to play the background today. It's all good. She'll be back. She'll be back next okay, week. Okay, I'm here now. She's always back there she working on the... that. It delayed. Oh, she's I was there. like, there I she heard is. and it got okay. quiet. I was like, okay, they call me. <laughs> but I definitely learned a lot tonight. Um, excuse me, forgive me. I didn't hear the question correctly. I didn't. But I'm just saying, I learned a lot, and just even. I think we always think that we know about. Stuff. No, I just want to say anything. Anything you wanted to say? Yeah, I was saying. I just think we know. We always say we know about stocks until we think we know more, and then it's like, oh said something else You're like oh i didn't know that so definitely informative and i need to go build my generational wealth starting tonight that's all yes <laughs> <laughs> see i like that she yeah. said starting tonight starting tonight so you ain't got to wait till tomorrow 
You can start today, this afternoon, or you can start tonight. It's up to you. Time's on your side. The question is, how are you going to use it? And how are you going to let it work in your favor? That's it. That's all we got today. Hope you guys got a lot of it, which I'm sure you did. Continue to think it, speak it, and achieve it. And until next time, myself, O and Denise, we holla. Thank you for joining the Frame of Mind, Inc. podcast. And as always here at Frame of Mind, Inc., think positive thoughts, say positive things, and do positive deeds. As our tagline says, think it, speak it, achieve it. See you next time. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.frameofmindinc.com where you can browse our online apparel store, listen to some of our original music and production services, as well as view our videos and projects we've done for our clients and customers.